Hello, my name is Craig Dial. I'm a dental radiographic technologist here in Sacramento. And today I'm gonna to talk to you about maximizing your cone beam CT. You have probably already listened to, or hopefully you have listened to some of my other videos about factors that can directly affect your image resolution on your cone beam CT. Now these are not all the things that can affect image resolution, but I feel that these are the most important key elements. And today we're gonna to be discussing voxel size and how voxel size can directly relate and affect the quality of your cone beam CT images. As we may know, a voxel is a three-dimensional pixel. A pixel is a picture element and a voxel is a volume element. The smaller the voxel, the better the detail. So for example, a 0.1 voxel is better detail and better image quality than a 0.4 voxel. And cone beam CT voxels are isotropic, which means they have the same height, depth, and width, and therefore being a cubical voxel, when we rotate the volume, the image quality stays the same. So I had a dentist visit me a few years ago and he was asking me the difference between a large voxel, 0.4, compared to a smaller voxel, 0.25. And he asked me to scan him using those two scan protocols so we can compare the two different image sets. And really what we're trying to do is trying to detect certain features within a scan. So we did a 300 frame count, 4.4 voxel scan, on this scan here of the dentist. And then I went ahead and took a 0.25 voxel 600 frame scan using this one over here. And we wanted to compare the difference. So there's two things that have changed. One is the voxel size and the other is the frame count. So sometimes the smaller the voxel, the more frames, the more data it collects as it goes around the patient's head and therefore the better feature detection, but also the higher dose may be there as well. So there's some balancing that we need to do when we're talking about patients. In our imaging center, we use both low uh, scan quality and high scan quality, depending on each patient's case. Uh, and that's talked about in another lecture for choosing the scan protocol. But right now, let's talk about the differences between a low voxel and a high voxel scan. If we take these two scans together, we can see that the 0.25 voxel has much better detailed information that we can see compared to the 0.4 voxel. There seems to be some change in the jaw joint that we can see better and more detailed in the 0.25 voxel. As you can see in this graph, each one of these little squares represents a pixel. So this would be the picture element that you would see superimposed over the scan if we were to look at it in this way. So being a 3D pixel, we're looking at the image element. The computer must choose each box if it has something in it or not. So this example, a 0.4 voxel, we may have just a very little amount of information in this window and the computer has to say, is there some data in this window or not? and it may end up not choosing it. If we superimpose over the x-ray, we can see where the 0.4 voxel is not giving us all the detail that's actually in the actual patient. And therefore, the computer will might block out a couple of windows because it's turning those sensors off because the detail is not fine enough. If we do the same scan and we do a 0.25 voxel, you can see the picture element is much tighter. The boxes are much smaller, and therefore we're gonna get much more detail than we would in a larger voxel scan. And when we superimpose the X-ray over it, you can see the area of interest is going to give us the detail that we're seeing in the 0.25 voxel scan. Now we still may not pick up every single little detail, and there still might be some area of, of interest that might not show up 
but we're getting more features to detect with better information. So this is a decision that you have to make is whether or not you need to see the features on a certain kind of case. And one way that you can do this is a scan on a patient, but you can also maybe do a line pair test or some type of testing to detect certain features within the patient's jaws. So if you want to look at the periodontal ligament space and we're using a 0.4 voxel scan and you do this type of chart, we may not be able to see that particular structure. And if we're looking at the mandibular canal, a 0.3 voxel scan may give us a better view than a 0.4 voxel scan. And usually we can see that if it's a 0.2 voxel scan. Now this is not a scientific uh, outline whatsoever. This is just a uh, general view to help us understand certain features that we want to detect. And this can vary depending on your particular machine, how many frames that you have and all the other uh, options that I've shown in the earlier videos that can affect image quality. One of the tests you can do on your particular machine is a line pair test. And a line pair test is really just a radiographic test pattern. There's two different types of line pair tests that I have examples for. This long skinny one down here is used for 2D evaluation. And really what a line pair test is used for is how many lines can you separate within a given millimeter and is used for spatial resolution. So the space between the lines, we wanna see the detail and how much detail can we get. So to try to help understand that, if we look at analog film, it can vary between 15 to 18 individual lines per millimeter. So pairs of lines per millimeter in analog film, we can sometimes see between 15 and 18. Comb beam CT is gonna be much lower than that. Um, it's going to vary anywhere from about two to maybe a half a line pair per millimeter. And so you can test your machine by using a line pair tester such as this circular one here, x-ray it inside your comb beam, and then see what you get. And that will help you set the idea of how many lines that you might be able to see in your given machine. So here we have a section that's that this is the gold standard here are the line pairs per millimeter this is the actual device and then what i can do is i can scan it so we can take a 0.25 millimeter scan a quick low dose scan and then we can see the separated lines as we can go down here we start to get all fuzzed together as we go down the the higher um, resolution and then i can do a 0.25 millimeter low resolution scan and look at the detail we can see now in the line pair. So we're understanding that a 0.25 voxel is going to give us better detail than a 0.25 voxel. If we take that same 0.15 voxel scan and bring it to a high res or more frame count, look at the detail that we have now. It's a little bit fuzzy and it starts to look noisy, but at the same time we're getting better line pair separation in the scan. And this is giving us information about the resolution that we're able to capture on our particular X-ray machine. And at the highest setting that I have on my machine, 0 .2, 0 0.075, we get the best separation. So a line pair test is a really good way to kind of use uh, for your machine to see what the difference is on the scan. But generally speaking, the smaller the voxel, the better the detail. So I wanna thank you for this moment. Um, just remember the voxel size has direct correlation to image resolution. And you want to choose the image protocol for features that you need to see and you need to detect on each case. Remember to always view choosing scan protocol, uh, the video that I've made for assistance if you need that. And I wanna thank you and, uh, and have a good day.